How we waited for moments like these. Have your way in this place. Holy Spirit, come as you wish. We are changed as you In our midst, how we waited for moments like Somebody help me say to him, have your way. Have your way in this land. Holy Spirit, come as you wish. Be our Yeah, you are here in our midst. How we waited for moments like this. Say, have your way. Have your way in this place, oh yes. Holy Spirit. Stand with me and let us sing this to the Lord today. You are here. You are here. In our midst. How we waited for moments. Have your way in this place, Lord. In this place. Holy Spirit. Take me to the first verse of that song. Here we go. You are here. Hey, among us. For we have gathered in your name. We can be in your presence. is on you. We have attempted to bring change to our own lives and have fallen woefully short. Oh God, so today at another time we've come and we simply say 
that oh God, because we've read in Jeremiah 18 that you are the potter, you're the master potter. And that when you are creating a pot, when you are making a pot, if that pot gets marred in your hand, you do not throw the clay away. You hold on to the clay and you make it into another. We're really just saying to you this morning, Lord, make us over again. Bless your words to our hearts. Bless your people who are gathered here at 105K Red Hills Road, those at 83 and a half Red Hills Road, and those at the Jamaica Theological Seminary uh, Hall there, and the many others who will be listening via the social media platforms. We pray that you will just bless your word to our hearts. Glorify your name. In Jesus' name, say amen. amen. Say a strong amen if you agree with the prayer. Yeah, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to add to the welcome this morning and welcoming those who are here with us for the very first time. I want to welcome a very special family, the Morris's family. Those uh, persons have been my very, very close friends for many years. When I was in my early 20s, they were my neighbors and I tell you, I can't begin to tell you how much these people have been a family to me. Eveland and Mitzi and Clyde and Maxine and their children and the many other people whom the Lord has placed in our lives. Thank you for being here. Let's use uh, Minister Courtney's mom. Is that your mom, sir? Here with you today. Mom, it's great to meet you. Great to see you in person. We've been praying for you. And there are two lovely people here to my right as well. Great to have you both in church. Hope I'm not. Is there another person beside you there? Yes, there's another beautiful lady there. Great to have you with us. All right. Let's use for a guide for this morning's deliberation two words. Heart repositioning. Heart repositioning. Luke chapter 22 and verse 42. Luke 22, 42. Heart repositioning. Heart repositioning. Take my platform sound a little down for me. So Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane. Offer prayer with his disciples to the Lord because he was about to face the most dreadful hour, dreadful period of his life. And he asked for help in prayer, but one man replied and said that our hearts are willing, but our flesh can't stand up to this. It's weak. Jesus is now talking to his father. Yeshua is now speaking to his father, Yahweh. And he says, Father, if it is possible, if it is your will, take this cup from me. Now, the part we are speaking from this morning is what I'm going to read now. He did not stop there. He said, nevertheless, not my will. But yours be done. Not, come on, open your mouth. Not my will. Yeah. Give yourself life by speaking the words for yourself from your own mouth. Come on. Not my will. All right. Say heart repositioning. As though you're speaking to your neighbor, say we need to reposition our hearts. Today, so they can become, so that they can become like Jesus is. All right, here we are. All I'm saying to you is that, Brother Chang, we need to reposition our hearts because where they're at, they are not serving the Lord uh, well. 
neither are we being served by them well. Life is meant to live by the Christian in such a way that it, they bring glory to God. And if we're living, in a, I'm sorry, if we're living our lives in a way that they start bringing more glory to God, it means that a greater good will come to us. So that those are the two G's. Glory to God, greater good. You, you understand what I'm saying to you? Uh, and that's, that's probably what the number one problem in our lives um, is. You know, there are many number one problems, it seems. But this is one of them. You know, so heart repositioning. Over the last few weeks, our God, Yahweh, seemed to have a serious job that he wants to get done on the whole matter of the heart as it concerns us. Getting the echo in the hall. He's dealing with all of us. God is dealing with all of us. He's definitely uh, dealing with all of us. God is dealing. Anyone who has heard the messages that's been coming, that have been coming for the last three weeks, running into this fourth week, would know that the Lord, without a shadow of a doubt, is dealing with all of us. And the only persons who will not be impacted to the point of change are those persons who have refused his entreaty. That is his attempt at convincing you and me that we need spiritual heart surgery in order to bring change. You see, friends, over time, just from being alive in this world, as you and I know it, our hearts, our hearts have become overtaken, captured even, if you will, by our own selfish desires. And we have been made into something other than that which scripture encourages. We found out that as time goes on, these hearts of ours just keep wandering away from being as dedicated like we once were and even find that we are not as willing to sacrifice in his service like we once did. We have found that our words sometimes speak one thing, but functionally, things are not lining up with what we say. They are very, very different. So as we've been called by the Lord over these weeks into times of deep reflections, introspection, and even retrospection, we are realizing that many of our selfish desires have been doing one major thing to us. That of exercising tremendous control and sway over our... Let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you. Our desires, our selfish desires are now exercising a great deal of control and sway over our hearts. And I would say, just far too much. Therefore then, friends, having discovered same, having discovered same, the thing to do is to call back to memory, call back to memory the most famous cry ever made to God by anyone throughout the history of mankind in my opinion in my opinion that cry is the cry we read early on from luke chapter 22 that jesus cried out to his father and he said my own desire i'm clearly paraphrasing now is that i would be able to get out of this thing 
I want to pull myself away from what's happening, what's about to happen here. Or in our context, what's happening here. But then he says, no, I can't end my prayer there. I understand better. I must take my prayer a little further and say to God the Father, not my will, but yours be done. There. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but thine. Not my will, but thine. That Gethsemane cry is the one cry that we need to keep hearing as long as Almighty God Yahweh lends us breath. We, we need to keep hearing it as Jesus did it. But we need to take it a step further and start doing it. We need to start doing it as he did. We need to start one major thing. We need to start saying to the Lord, my own selfish desires are getting in the way of me allowing you to have your way. So, Father, I'm asking you to remember that I'm changing my cry to you. My current cry simply is what Jesus cried to you. It's not my will, but yours be done. No other desire of our hearts. No other desire of our hearts must be allowed to overwhelm the desire we have for Savior, for our Savior and King, Yeshua. I'm, I'm just simply saying, no, we should not allow any other desire to overwhelm or overrun or overtake our, 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 our foremost desire. Our foremost desire is to be the desire to say to God, I want this and I want that. I feel for this. And I feel for that. But you know what God? Uh, you met me and you know better than I know. So not my will. Say it no man. Not my will. Lord I don't like lazy Christians. Not my will. But yours be done. If you and I can keep always in mind. That the truth learned. This truth learned from scripture. If we can, if we can keep in mind the truth. That says, hear me now, his will is best. His will, come on JTS, come on Edith three and a half, come on Sister Bell. His will, come on Deacon Will, his will is best. There's a song I'm going to attempt to do if we can find it on the screen later on at the Lord's Prayer My Life. And there's a line in the song that says, his will is best, therefore I yield to him my all. His will is best. Therefore, I yield. Those who are with me here can't hear, but you can hear Deacon Will and the others. So, his will is best. Therefore, I yield to him my all. Here's what I'm hoping, dear, dear ones. I am hoping that I can get us all to agree on this one thing for this moment. I'm hoping that in this time of quiet contemplation, that from this early, I can ask us to bow, and I'm not joking now, I, 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 I'm hoping I can ask us to bow our heads in prayer before the Lord, as, and as we do, we sink, we start thinking of the most pressing thing. Casey, or things, the most pressing thing or things that we claim we want. Latoya, you may talk, you know, and novelet, you may talk, and you may talk. Watch this now. If you can just take a moment in the middle of what's happening right now and think of the most pressing thing or things that you want. Then put them before the Lord or 
put it before the Lord in prayer. Don't stop there. Then go ahead thereafter and try and find it in your heart to do the exact thing that Jesus did. Play a little better on the keyboard and let me give them a little time just to do that. I want to invite you to think of the most pressing thing that you think you want or need. Think of the set of things that you really have on your heart and might have muttered to the Lord before. And as those things float to the top, I want you to bow your heads right where you are, wherever you are at home, wherever. And I want you to think of what that need is. Money to fund my education. Need to buy me a house. I mean, all these wonderful things. I don't care. Think of what your most pressing need is. And when that thing comes to mind, Charmaine, what you need to do is to go before the Lord and say, Lord, this is what I need. I think I want this. My heart has been set on this. And after you have said that to the Lord, turn back to the text we read from Luke 22, 41, 42, thereabout, and say to the Lord, this is what my own heart is set on right now. But Lord, I am bringing my heart in alignment with that of Jesus, Yeshua. And I'm saying to you, Lord, not my will. Come on, church. Not my will, but thine will. Come on, JTS. Not my will, but thine. I'm going to tell you why it's so hard for some of you. I all know some people are saying, and, and me understand. I'm going to force you. Don't say it because I ask you. I'm going to tell you. I know why. Because the selfishness of our hearts, these selfish desires, have so captured and overtaken our lives. And we have now built monuments. We've built idols, uh, the, the North American rubbish preaching, this, this health and wealth liar gospel. It's not a gospel. It's not true. It's not taught in the Bible that says you must just name it and claim it. It's a lie. There's nothing in the Bible that says that. And you cannot manipulate God. No one on the planet can manipulate God. You can't manipulate him from, for healing. You can't manipulate him for wealth. You can't manipulate God for any. There's not one thing that you can manipulate God. You have to go to him in prayer. The only thing a born again Christian can do, Sash, is to go to the Lord in prayer and, and, and lay your petitions out before him. Just put, just lay out your case before him. And then you follow Jesus and say, Lord, it is not my will, but thine be done. It is not my will, but thine. But what? Thine be done. Oh God. So here it is. Father, I'm desiring these set of things. Lord, I'm laying them out before you now. But Father, I am aware that no 40 days fasting, no 21 days fasting, no prayer whole night, no getting up at midnight to pray at 12 because demons are out. All these bugger nonsense. Nonsense. And both prayer for the 12 mountains and, and God. Let me tell you, you guys don't know some things that happen right here in Jamaica, you know. People hire helicopter. Church people hire helicopter and drive up a mountain, go throw salt. I know, hear me, hear this, and know me, know this. God, 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 because some prophet, whoever could tell them, say, God, say, no, no, God, say, it's a lie. The Bible tells us exactly how to pray. Jesus tells us how to pray. You must go to Yahweh and say, Our oh, Father who art in heaven. And uh, yes, you understand. And then there are many other verses, and I'm going to read a few in a while. But it is not true that these people are hearing any voice from God. A lie them telling. The Bible is the voice of God. The Bible is God's voice. Yeah. Yeah. You see all this, this notion that the world is going to get better and we're praying for this. The, you're, you're praying against God's announcements. 
The Bible has already announced that as we draw closer to the end of time, it's going to get worse. You better reposition your heart and stop being fooled by mushy, mushy, hairy, fairy foolishness. Go to the word of God. It's the more sure word of prophecy. It is the more sure word of prophecy. So let us all say, not my will, Lord. Say it like your 10,000 strong. Say, not my will, Lord. But thine be done. You see, friends, our, our great God, Yahweh. Our great God, Yahweh. Our God, our Lord. When we come before him, Elder Paul, we simply need to say to him, Lord, help my heart. Come on, say it. Say, help my heart right now, Lord. To catch up with your words. I mean it, you know. Say, help my heart, God. To catch up with your word. Father, I need to get my heart at the place in you where I approach your throne always. Always, Lord, with the attitude that my elder brother, that my elder brother had when he approached you in prayer. Come on, church, say, not my will. Not my will. Say it until you make it into a little chorus. Say, not my will. Not my will. Come on, say, not my, not my will. Let's add the other piece now. Not my will, but thine be done. This notion that you can twist God's arm is a lie. In fact, I'm going to tell you that you already know it's a lie. Because with all of the fightings and all of the so-called anointed prayers that you claim to be praying, there's, not, there's no such thing you know, as no anointed prayer. No. Prayer is communication with God. Prayer is asking. Prayer is in you going to God and speaking to him in faith there's nobody who has any more anointed prayer than anybody else all of us have been given the measure of faith all you need to do the faith is like a mustard seed so all you have to do with faith is to plant it in your heart your heart is the ground god's word is the seed we prove that from scripture so you get god's word and you plant it in your heart and allow it to grow into a big tree am i making sense that's what you do with seeds you plant them and the seed bring forth a massive tree and from that tree you have a thousand more seeds is that making sense? So when you go to the Lord in prayer, then Anthony, you simply in faith approach him. Hear what Hebrews 4.16 says. It says we must come boldly to the throne of grace where we will find mercy and grace uh, to help in time of need. So the two things, there are three things that we need to you know. If we are going to him, we need to go in faith. When we go in faith, we need to have two things in our, our minds. Lord, I need your mercy. Lord, I need your grace. I've come to you in faith. Come on, say not my will. Say not my will. Not my will. But thine be done. Now, dear ones, for those of us who engaged ourselves a while ago as I asked us to be in this little exercise. If you were engaged just now, please know this. Please know this. Please know that the one thing we certainly cannot afford to take place going forward is us going back to praying prayers to our Father. Everybody needs to hear me now. I said it last week. I'm saying it again. Praying prayers to our Father. Having a demanding tone. That's what the charismatic movement and Pentecostalism tell people. You know, having a demanding tone. As though we're talking to some common boy around the corner around us. Up. Huh? So we go to the Lord and we say, we say to Yahweh, in the name of Jesus, 
me. I have to get this. I, I, I've gone to prayer meetings and hear people, you know, hear small groups of people pray. And, and you know, one, one will look to the other and they'll have them like a sing and, and say, in, in, I, I, want, I want my husband this year and in the name of Jesus, me have to get him. I mean, I'm just thinking, who do you think you're chat to? Who do you think you're talking to? The people who get their prayers answered in the Bible, you know what they did? They fall on their faces. They, what, them go down and them say, merciful. They ask God for his mercy. Hannah, Hannah stayed in the temple and she prayed and cried because Penina was having children and, the hus and she couldn't have no picnic for the husband. And, and, and Penina, they provoke her and they call her mule and barren. And she just go up at the temple. All the priests passed them up at the temple. Never even know what she had done. She just start talk to herself. Hear him now. She drink rum and drunk. She don't know she said, the woman is there before the Lord doing a simple thing, talking to him in faith. And sooner or later, she go home one night and fix up the bed nice and set up some pillow for the bed. I say, we don't know if my womb tilt or what happened to me, but me go ahead, try again. And she just try again. And, 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 and there was no morning after pill. A few months later, the thing start grow. And Penina have to shut up her mouth because the thing start grow. Open your mouth and say, grow my things, Lord. You know, because you see, you have to know now that it's by faith. It is by faith. It's by grace alone. Through faith alone. In Christ alone. It's by faith. I don't know what people are asking the Lord for this morning, Pastor Red. I don't know, sir, what we're asking him for. But I'm asking you, Sister John, when you go before the Lord, don't get frustrated. Don't allow anxiety to, take, to overtake your life. Go before him in prayer, in simple faith. Go before him in simple faith, in prayer, and lay out your case before him. This may have to get his story. No work with God. It no work with God. This may have to get it approached, my friends. Just simply will not get us anywhere with the God of creation. It won't. So the world has taught us well. The world has taught us well. We are told by them to just set our minds on achieving a particular thing. Then continue to speak it out of our mouths. And it will come to pass. Let me just tell you the truth. We are not Hindus. Christians are not Hindus. Hindus chant to their evil spirits. They have a pantheon of gods. And they chant to their demonic emissaries. And their demonic emissaries bring things to pass in their lives. Hear me now. We are not Hindus, Hindus chant to their gods, come on G, in order to get, I just said it, their emissaries to get what they want to them. That is not God's way. Say it with me. It's not God's way. Come on, man. Say it's not God's way. Come on, brother Graf. Say it's not God's way. We're going to go to what God's way is. We're going to go to what? But in our kingdom, in our kingdom, what we do, we go to God, Yahweh, in prayer. Here's what we do. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask. Come on, church. Come on, come on, come on. Ask. All right, we're not going to stir your emotion at this church. That's not what we do. We preach the word and allow it to take root, root if you will allow it. And then it will bring change to our stubborn hearts. Here we are now. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. Hear the verse now that capture me now, man. Verse 8 says, For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be oh god 
Say this is our way. Convince yourself, man. Say this is our way. Come on, Lottie. Say this is our way. Say this is the kingdom way. Let's go to First Thessalonians 5, 17. First Thessalonians 5. Three simple words. Don't have to wait till 12 o'clock at night. By the way, God gives his beloved sweet sleep. When night come, go on your bed, go rest. You not drive when on demon more than any other time in your prayer by setting up to pray against them 4 o'clock in the morning. Go ahead and go sleep. Go ahead and go sleep. For the Lord, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, he is keeping a watch over you. Amen. When night come, me say me prayer, and me go on my bed, go sleep. People send me all kind of WhatsApp, what you call it, Zoom, same thing. How them beg me to join them at X time for prayer. Me not even read it. Me, I am following this, not what you come up with. Pray ceaselessly, pray without ceasing. So, right now, my heart is praying. I'm praying for all of you inside here, even whilst I'm preaching. I mean that. And when I leave church, I generally drive and take Nikon downtown for him to get a bus to go to Maypen. And watch me now, watch me on the journey, may I pray when I'm coming back, may I pray. In other words, I'm, I'm, I'm following what this tells me to do. In other, I'm not telling Hold on now. Let me make it clear. I'm not telling you that I'm just doing it. They go on like I'm mad. I'm not mad. But I don't need any special time to pray. I just talk to daddy whenever I want. I talk to daddy whenever so the Bible says you are to pray without ceasing. Luke 18, 1. You are to pray without ceasing. Then he spoke a parable to them that men and women, it, it's not meant just male man, all right? That we are always to pray and not lose heart. I mean, I don't know what we look for in a man. I don't know what church people are looking for. The Bible says, Obviously, things are going to be happening in our lives that will want to make us want to lose heart. So Jesus is addressing that right here. He's not asking you, I want to go on with you now, make you, make you look like you lose heart. He's not asking those questions. He already knows that there are times when life's situations cause us to feel like we want to throw in the towel. So Jesus addressed it in one verse. He says, men ought always to pray and not call yourself by name and say, I won't lose heart. Fitzroy, uh, listen, Fitzroy will not lose heart. Shut up, devil. I will, come the man, shut up, devil. I will not lose no matter what's happening in my life right now, come on, John, I won't lose heart. If you all were from Jamaica, I'm just say, me no nah lose heart. No nah lose heart. No nah lose heart. First Timothy 2 and verse 8. <coughs> First Timothy 2 and verse 8. I desire, therefore, <coughs> that men pray Say everywhere that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubtings. We follow our Lord's instructions and model. We follow our Lord's. Hi, Sister Chin in New York, uh, and, and, and Sister Shand. Thank you so much for the gifts you sent for the church this week. Listen carefully. We follow. And Maxine Morris, thank you for the gift you sent last week. Listen, we follow our Lord's instructions and model. We follow his model. Luke 11, 1 to 4. Luke 11. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he stopped, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Huh? Give us day by day. Oh, I want us to pray verse 3. Come on. Give us day by day. Oh, come to man. Come to man. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we also forgive every. Come on, say everyone. You have to check your heart. You know, I'm going to tell Lion Night Church. You know, let me check your heart. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us and do not lead us into temptation. But, oh God, Paul, you don't need nothing more than this big man. If, if demons are attacking you, you don't need anything more than this. Watch me now. Watch me now. But, deliver us from the evil. Come on, sister. Nick. Deliver us from come on brother Chan. come on spencer deliver us from come on claire deliver us from the evil one that is all i want that is all that this man wants. that if god would just answer the pray, the piece of prayer for me and say man deliver me from the evil one. Oh god what else do I need but to follow Jesus' model? I'm about to eat late tonight and get what you call it, nigger right. What you on a nigger right next one name? You know, and they wake up about then dream. The dream can't tell me what. I will not be led by your dream. I can't trust your dream. I can't trust what God says. I cannot trust your dream. Me not hide around no card and everybody who know me just know. Me not, me not hide around no card and me can't trust your dream, sister child. Me not even know what child your husband gave you eat late last night because <laughs> me, me can't trust your dream. And I hear you. Then pass in a believe in dreams and visions. You know, you can go. Here's the more sure word of prophecy. Take me to the text of scripture. Tell me what Yahweh said. Come, me can't trust man and woman and pick me and girl. Me can't trust me. Just tell me what Yahweh say. Me now nah see not to share a dream with me. Now I want to hear it. Paul has shared many dreams with me. And I've always said to him, Pablo, write them down and date them and let us watch and see what will become of them. That's what they say. But I can't make that lead me. Ah, oh, Jesus, we come we reach them places and our people vex with you. Lord have mercy. We follow his instructions and his model. Take me back to Luke 22 there. Let us read what happened again. When from verse 40, when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into what? Temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about the stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed saying, Father, if it be, if it is your will, take the sin to you from me, God. Lord Jesus, take what the sin to you from me. It ought to choke me. It feel like it's going to kill me. But maybe it now kill you. Maybe it's going to build you. All right, if it's your will, if it is your will, take this cup from me. What a thing, what a thing. If it is your will, take it away. But if it is not your will, just make the thing have its course, no man. No wonder you don't have no hold for likes and something for, 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 for YouTube. You go and preach here and see if you go and get no crowd. If you continue to preach here, we don't get no crowd. But me don't know who tell you, say me look for crowd. We, we bring truth. We're, we look for truth and we bring truth. I never told you I was looking for crowds. It has never been on my mind. If it is your will, Lord. <laughs> hey, all I say to God is, Lord, if it is your will, send 10,000. Because if 10 come, we go and preach the truth to them. If 10,000 come, are the same truth me going to preach today. Are you with me here? Is anybody hearing me today? 
Yeah, yeah. Look at that. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about the stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours. Come to man. Not my will, but yours. Matthew 6, 5 and 8. Matthew 6, 5 through 8. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5, 6, 7, and 8. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the Hindus and the others do. For they think that they will be heard for their what? For their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows. That's in thing a big, it big, it big, it big, it big, it big like a house. Watch this. I never used to understand this thing, you know. Because our selfish desires make we are say, then how him know so we need a care and I'm blessed with a care. And I said, go. Read with me again. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have want of. Your father knows the things you have want of. Oh, so you can't move it, you don't have a car then. I'm bus and taxi run for the road every day. That's a want. Come again. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of even before you ask. I you be want to be my father, man. I didn't want to be my heavenly father. I mean, I'll change him for no body for nothing at all. I'm going after heart change. Say that with me. I'm going. Come on, say it three more times. I'm going. Let's try again. I'm going after one last time now. I am going. Uh, you see, I'm adjusting my attitude by seeking to conform to what God's word really says in order that I might realign my heart aright. As of this hour, as of this moment, whenever time I go before the Lord with petitions, I'm going to spread them out before him boldly. If I ever go to pray, if I go to the Lord in prayer, I'm going to take my petitions and I'm going to spread them out before him boldly. Say boldly. While at the same time making sure to keep my head, my hands, and my heart wide open. Leaving place for the not my will, but yours be done. All right, me know you never hear, but me go ahead, me go ahead, me just want some people benefit, so me go ahead and tell you again. There is nothing wrong in praying even your ignorant prayers. So long as at the end of it, Brother Courtney, you say to the Lord, God, I'm a holy person thing, them here. These are the things I have on my heart, Lord. Lord, me have these things on my mind. I'm going to spread them out before you. But I am a Christian. I'm a born again believer. And I am conscious that it's not my selfish desires that's going to rule here. But not my will, but yours be done, Marshall Lee. Not my will. Anna, if you pray like that, you will never get frustrated. If you pray like that, you will never be disappointed. 
because you would have gone to the Lord in prayer knowing that what you are asking him for, he knows better than you what you really need. So he's not going to give you what you want, but he's going to supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Change my heart, oh God. Change my heart. Oh God, reposition my heart, Lord. I will not allow myself to ever get locked into the I must attitude. I will not, what can you shield man? I will not allow, Pat Lee, I will not allow myself to be cornered by the dirty heart that we hold or we have. A heart of man is desperately wicked. Out of the heart proceeds all kinds of dirty things. I want my heart to be repositioned. Maybe I know who may preach to you. Know. Maybe I know who know. I'm conscious about that for the past four weeks. Maybe I really feel my message. I may come to come out, may give to you. Know. But may you know still. I want my heart to be repositioned. I want a new repositioning of my heart. I will not allow myself to ever get locked into the I must attitude. With God, Yahweh, there is no I must. There is no mehafigeti. Child of God, we will seek to always be found as citizens of his majesty's kingdom. Having a proper heart position. I don't know who this message is for this morning. But if the Lord lends me breath till the end of the time, me want to try and give it clearly. I want to be. I want to start living my life going forward with my heart rightly positioned. I want my heart to be rightly positioned. A proper heart positioning. A proper heart position. Watch this now. Let's add something to that. A proper heart position requires submission. A proper heart position requires submission. Submission that is to Yahweh, creator God. Look here. If ever as a Christian you find yourself saying things like, this is what I want. This is what I want and nothing can stop me from getting it. Have you, no, no, no answer, but have you ever heard people, you know, a this me want and, 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 and no matter what you want, say, a this me want. That's not the attitude of a born again believer. If you ever find yourself doing that, at that point, you know you will have to start taking a good look at your own heart again. And after taking that look, Having seen, seek immediately thereafter then to get rid of it fast. Get rid of that kind of attitude that says, me want this year and nothing going to stop me from getting it. And this me want. You don't even know yourself. The one who makes you, the one, I'm sorry, the one who made you. He's the one who knows everything about you. Here's how a changed heart prays. Here's how a heart that is changed prays. The prayer that comes from a person with a changed heart goes like this. Heavenly Father, bring your designs and your desires for my life to pass in Jesus Yeshua's name. I know you're not here, but you know, I have a way of repeating things. I'm going to do it again. Here we are, Spencer. Here we are, my brother Warren. Here we are, sir. Here's the prayer of a truly born from above believer. You ask God to bring, watch this now. You say to him, Lord, bring your desires and your designs. Hey, Sue, 
Lord, hey, I want to migrate and go to Canada to live. Me just feel so Jamaica is safe again. So I want to go to Canada to live. I may want to buy three houses and a pension and thing. But me never consult God and ask him if that's his design. Is that your desire? Is that your will for me? Where are we? Why have we moved away, Sally, from the days when we used to say, I want God's will for my life. I want God's will for <laughs> Pastor, you can't go out and feel like little boring preaching it up. You're sinting the tech, the message in the tech of a long time, sinting that, that days for that gone long time. I want your will for my life. Lord, I'm in church today with a few other kingdom citizens and others gathered elsewhere. And our simple prayer to you today is that we want your will for our lives. So change my heart, oh God. Change my heart, oh God. Change my selfish desires, oh Lord. Bring your designs and desires for my life to pass in Jesus' name. You see, my friends, we should bear in mind that God's will, all of us should bear in mind that God's will will always stand in the way of all our selfish demands. God's will, God's sovereign divine will, God's divine will will always stand in the way of our selfish demands and desires. I hear somebody saying, watch this now. No man, God have two will. He has a perfect will and a permissive will. Oh, yes. I would not teach that and I don't even want to mention that because never in my life would I want God permissive will. I would never, if, if, if anything really goes so, up, I would never want God to give me his hey Antinov, I would never want God to it. Let me tell you what God's permissive will would be that him no want the thing for you, and you grab him by him hand and beg your friend them help you to sit as though you can. And he just says, All right, you want to have your way, go on. Is that God's will? That's <laughs> not like God's will to me. <laughs> God's will will always stand in the way of all our selfish demands. Are you listening to this? His will will always stand in your selfish, in the, in the way of your selfish demands. I believe that someone's hearing this message. Somebody who is struggling. I really do believe that with my whole heart. Somebody who is struggling really struggling is hearing this message and with the whole matter of impatience and just struggling how oh God not answer me why well, I'm not even the feeling presence anymore all them hold for something there were people teaching our church that you must be feeling something on you we live by faith we live by faith in other words if my flesh now feels a God there me have to make sure say me know say God say I will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't live by my feeling. I don't live by how oh yes, oh, but, yeah, I don't what is that anyway? Nonsense. Shake and wall up on the floor and go home and not no change. Nonsense. We live by faith. So the old people them never have no hope a big song for sing. So they would have sing Lime Tell. Them for them for them songs were really big. But I, I, I want a little point more on me. The church would be ending late at 11 o'clock at night. And, and the mamas and the people in the church just get up and start saying, Lord, I believe. Not more, you know. Lord, I believe. Hear the next line now. All things are possible. And they would just believe.
For with God nothing shall be impossible. But that nothing isn't speaking of your selfish desires. That nothing is speaking of concerning his divine will. For your life and my life. His divine will for the church. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I have a word for you. I have a word for you and it's nothing new. It's an old saying. Here's what it says. It says, let go and let God. Let go and let. Say it one more time with me now. Come on. Let go. Come on, Sister T. Let go and That's what, ma'am? That's the only place where you'll find peace. Might as well you cut out all of your, just cut out all of the anxiety and stuff out. Just cut it out. All the frustrating thoughts and the, the fight. And a God here fight. Are you self here fighting? A God, God is not in that fight with you. For he's not there where anxiety is ruling. He's not there. You have to lay all your anxieties aside. Hmm? And this is just by way of reminder. We t I, I, I say that from this pulpit ever so often. Just get rid of your anxieties. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. You don't understand it. I don't understand it either too. I, I don't have the answers and you don't have the answers. But we are with the one who have all the answers. So you have to learn to rest. But you see, you can't rest in God if you have the same old heart, you know. Your heart needs to be repositioned. Let me back up and ask then. During that little time out that we took not so long ago. The little time out to conduct the little heart search. Did you discover anything that your heart over time has been increasingly being controlled by? Becoming controlled by? Did you, did you, I'm not asking you to answer me, I'm just saying, did you, did you discover that you are so overtaken with how you want to change a car, you want to move to a different house, and you want to travel, and you, and you want to marry this girl and that boy or something something i mean you know the whole person thing them uh, is it that your heart has become overtaken with all these things that you have crowded out god can't see my him can see you because like ezekiel 14 we have installed idols in our hearts and those idols in our hearts have created a blockage that our eyes can't see and the word says it makes us fall into a ditch. <sighs> the thing, the thing that is crowding your heart. The thing that is controlling your heart. The thing that is carrying your heart away. You need to put an end to its increase now. The first step in my mind is that you and I put an end to the possibility of that expanding. Stop it from growing bigger. Stop it. Stop it from, from getting, getting, getting from spreading out some more in your heart. And if you can stop it by the grace of God, then you ask God to help you to just clean out your heart. Do not allow the things that are crowding your heart to ever get bigger. Stop it. Don't allow them to increase. Can I just make an announcement to you that the only person, the only thing that is essential to life 
is the one who is the giver and sustainer of life. I only him essential to life. He's our air that we breathe. He's the water of life. The only person that is essential to life and living is the giver of life himself. The only person. The one who gives and sustains life. The one who gives and sustains life. He's really and truly the only one who is essential to life. Friend of God, listen. If ever you get to a point in your life where you find yourself looking at whatever you are desiring as something that you can't live without, that is when you know that that thing is getting the better of you. It is not true that you can't live without it. It's a lie that the devil has told you. You can live without it. What you can't live without is what God has designed for you. You want that which God has designed. That is why you can't envy me. Leave me a pistol jacket. Go buy the next one you like. You can't understand. I'm trying. Just, no, just, are you understanding? Yeah, because you see what God have for me. This is why I never look at another man's ministry yet and think to myself, I don't want mine to be like that. I mean, I look over the fence, man. The fence, the fence builds so tall that like me, me, me can't see. Me can't see. So any guy who thinks say me go and ever look for theme things and I say, boy, I would love my church or my ministry to be like you make a sad mistake. I want what God has designed for us. The only reason you are here and not at another church, you know, is because you feel like you have been, you fit into the design that's here. Maybe a day might come when you say, me not feel fit anymore. And that's fine. Just tell me and we bless you. You go. I'm just saying to you that right now, Sister Chang, you fit in the design. There's something about the, the design. All you want for your personal life is God's design. Most of the troubles in our lives are there because we are looking for another design. We are having desires that are other than that which God wants. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna stay long today. I may tell you, but me want it. Me want it for soak. The thing that you are thinking that you can't live without, that thing is getting the better of you. That is, that selfish desire of yours is getting the better of you. Back now to the story of the hard war as we look towards home. Back to the story of the hard war. That unseen war that is constantly taking place in our hearts and is happening to some of us even as I speak right now. I'm here to tell us that it will, it will only cease. That war in our hearts will only cease when you and I as born from above believers get to a critical point in our lives where we start desiring him more than we are desiring those other things. Hear me and hear me well, dear ones. If we ever allow ourselves to get to a point in our lives where we start finding it a pain to live without the things we are desiring, we are going to find ourselves in serious trouble. Once such is identified, if you identify that you are beginning to get yourself into some troubles in your life because of wrong desires, as you identify the thing that is taking place in your life and, 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 and I in my life, then we won't have to ask any questions concerning reason. We don't have to ask any question 
concerning the reason why the fellowship in the relationship that we share with Almighty God Yahweh is so badly affected. The fellowship is not badly affected because you have not been on a 21 day fast since the year has begun. That's not the reason. That's not the reason. The reason why the fellowship is so badly affected in the relationship that you're having between you and God is because of wrong heart desires. It's because you and I have not come to the place where we say, Lord, not my will, but yours. Here's how we look to close today. We're going to look to close today by making the point that any failure, any failure on our part to get our heart's desires fulfilled will always lead us to becoming very, very disappointed. We'll become the most disappointed person in church. If we end up having these desires of our own, when they do not get fulfilled, all that happens in the end, Matthew, is that you walk away being very, very disappointed. Now, disappointment which has come about as a result of unmet expectations will always leave us very hurt. And they leave us very angry. And the worst anger is anger towards God. By the way, me just tell you for one who knows true, me tell me no one whole heap of church people. Me never say them come from here. But I know a whole heap of church people, a great number of church people who are angry with God. Cause them, them, you know, them just never ever say the words of Jesus. Not my will. They have their own selfish desires. And when they are not being brought to pass, they get angry with pastor, they get angry with church, and they ultimately get angry with God. So we need our hearts to be repositioned. Stand with me everywhere, everyone. Let us close today. Let's close. We need to get our heart repositioned. The cleaning out of heart idols. The cleaning out of heart idols in order that God Almighty can become the sole occupier and control of our heart will only take place if we take the time to truly identify what those idols really are that have captured and overtaken our hearts. After they are identified, after they have been identified, practical steps must now be taken to deal with the actual clearing out and cleaning up of the heart. Clearing out and cleaning up. Say it that may try get to do. Clearing out and try with me again now. Clearing out and cleaning up. I'm going to try a song with us before we say goodbye. It's on the screen. Go to the first verse of that song. I'm going to make an attempt to try this. Follow from your screens if you can. Hopefully those at the other centers can see from their screens. Yeah, Lord, my life was once so dark and full of sin. My stubborn will would not his words obey. But when I ask the Savior to come in, he cleansed my heart and turned my nights to day. I will say yes, dear Lord, to Thee alone. Now and forever, may Thy will be done. Shall forever be thy throne. 
I love and, and serve thee till my race is done. His heart was thrust on, on dark, dark gets enemy. And those he loved could not his sorrow share. Here it is now. Twas on the cruel cross of Calvary. The sins of all the world he carried there. Try now. I will say yes, dear Lord, to Thee alone, now and forever, may Thy will be done, my yielded heart shall forever I love and serve thee till my rest is run. I want us together to talk to the next verse. Here we are. Such love demands the best I can give. I'll follow him wherever he may call. My love, my life, my service. I will give. His will is best. I yield to him. Is there a fourth verse to this thing, sir? Yes. No, let's go to the third verse one more time. Everyone, let's read together. It says what? Such love demands the best I can give. I'll follow him wherever he may call. Here we are now. My love. My life, my, life, my, my service, service, I will give. His will is best. I, I yield to him my all. my all. Let's bow our heads everywhere and let's go into prayer right now. Place off bed for us and let's be praying. Come on, 83 and a half. Sister Bell and the team down there. Deacon Will and the others at JTS. All those of us who are here at 105K. Let's pray. Let's talk to the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And strangely, you ask church people to pray. I don't know what they do. You know, in Jesus' precious name today. Lord, I pray for the person who might be watching who has fallen from fellowship with you. Person who once walked with you but has fallen out of fellowship. I pray for the person who's watching and that person is desirous of coming into fellowship. Lord, a repositioning of the heart. A repositioning of the heart is the cry today. A change. Oh God, a heart surgery. A repositioning of the heart. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Matthew. Come on, Graphene. Lord, my heart, my heart, my heart, my heart, Lord. I can't point on my neighbor. I can't backbite the other person. I've got to turn the searchlight on, on my heart. My desires are wrong. I want the right desires. I do not want my will to be done. Lord, I do not want my will to be done. I want your will. I want your will. Reposition, reposition, reposition my heart. I want for there to be a repositioning of my heart, oh God. I do not want to get involved in emotionalism. I want my heart to be genuinely transformed. I'm not looking for an experience at church. I'm not looking for a feeling. I want a genuine, authentic change of life and heart. I want my life to be conformed to the image of your dear son. My stubborn will 
at last have yielded. I would be thine and thine alone. Oh, Thy will be done, sweet will of God, still falls me closer.
you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Deaconess Carol and uh, Minister Gerald, Sister Hollinshead. Let's just allow God's people to take their emblems. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up this bread and this wine representing your blood and your body. We have just asked you to help us reposition our hearts. God, in the name of Jesus, we lift this up to you now because we're about to sit with you at your table. Do this as often as you do it, says Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. You are going to be doing it in remembrance. You are to do it in remembrance of me. Lord, we remember the price you paid for our wretched hearts. We remember the price you paid for our sins. Lord, I command that there will be healing. I pray and ask that you will bring about healing. That you will bring about deliverance. That today you will set the captives free. The same power that was exerted to raise Jesus from the dead through the blood. We access that now through this same efficacious blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Let not one person in this place or elsewhere at home where you're taking a piece of cracker or bread and water to be blessed right now. Let not one person escape your touch, your fresh touch today. Father, what we're asking for is, your, is for your will to be done. We lay aside all selfish desires just like you did. Bless these emblems today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 On the night that our Lord was be betrayed. On the night that our Lord was betrayed. He took bread. He blessed it. Broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He gave it to them. Knowing exactly what the meaning of it is. So he announced it. He said to them, This is my body, which is broken for you. That's over 2,000 years ago. And then he made the announcement that as often as it is done by his children by his followers that they must do it in remembrance of how he was scourged battered bruised chopped up with a cat of nine tails with glass bottle at the end bones at the end of it ripping his body from his bones he says this body was broken for you. I don't I don't know what you're you're going through at this moment, but I want to announce to you that the Lord's body was broken for you. Reposition our hearts now concerning this matter, Lord. Father, bring healing and deliverance. Do the miraculous, Lord, and set the captives free. Free our hearts from the end entanglements of the idols that are there lord we want for there to be a cleaning out we want for there to be a clearing up in the name of jesus i say to you this morning eat ye all of it and in your hearts be thankful eat ye all of it
Thy life was given for me. Thy blood, O oh Lord, was shed that I might ransom be and quickened from the dead. Thy life, thy life was given for me. What have I given for thee? Long years were spent for me in weariness and woe that through eternity thy glory I might Long years, long years were spent for me. Have I spent all for thee? Thy father's home of light, thy rainbow circled throne. World left for earthly night, for wanderings sad and low. Yea, all, yea, all was left for me. Have I left? Thou, Lord, has borne for me more than my tongue can tell. Of the dressed agony to rescue me from hell. Thou suffered all for me, for me. What have I borne? And thou hast brought to me down from thy home above. Salvation full and free, thy pardon and thy great gifts, great gifts, thou promised me. My life be given, my years for thee be spent, words letters all be written, and joy with Come to the table of mercy, prepared with the wine and the bread. Those who are hungry and thirsty, come and your souls will be fed. Come at 
the Lord's invitation receive from his nail hairs and eat of the bread of salvation and drink of the blood of the Lamb. On the same night, he took the cup and he made an eternal declaration. He told his disciples that you are moving from under the old covenant. My words there. He says, this is the new covenant in my blood. This is the new covenant. Paul later on tells us that our righteousness is of him. Today we stand and we say no condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation. Come on. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. For we walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Drink his blood. And in your hearts be thankful. Drink ye all of it. Be thankful. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's name. Oh! 
my father's kingdom Christ the Lord Yeshua Jesus is calling you to a relationship with him not to churchianity not to a certain church's style of doing ministry he's calling you to a relationship with him it means you have to be born again from above God has to plant his divine seed on your inside causing you to be regene mm, 
you must become regenerated born from above new life must be given to you in order that you can say i have got salvation in time the way to receive that is to acknowledge your sins confess the sins to the lord repent of those sins which means to abandon them forsake them huh? and ask the lord to come into your heart and to wash you in his blood and to plant his divine seed within your inside now all of this is done by faith you have to believe what's written out in the bible concerning man's salvation concerning yahweh god sending his son jesus john 3 16 17 and 18 to come into this world and to die taking your place if you want to get your name written down for heaven you go to god through jesus his son and ask for forgiveness repent of your sins get to a church that is teaching the word of god authentically and get yourself baptized call us and let us know that you've done that 876 Four three five three three nine four. That's our WhatsApp number. You can send us a message. Ask for, uh, to ask for prayer for yourself, your family, and so on. And it will be our joy. Well, join us again on Thursday at six o'clock for what we call a grow session. G R O W, gaining the riches of the word. If you go to Facebook, if you go to YouTube. You will find our teachings there and we say to you the lord bless you richly we love you have a blessed afternoon and the rest of the week god bless you